a previous video, we learned that the standard cell potential is positive for spontaneous redox reactions, such as those in voltaic cells. We also know from our study of thermodynamics that for spontaneous processes, the standard free energy change is negative and the value of the equilibrium constant is greater than 1. Because of this, we can understand that there is a relationship between the standard cell potential, the standard free energy change, and the equilibrium constant for a chemical process. Based on our study of thermodynamics, we already know the relationship between the standard free energy change and the equilibrium constant. That is, the standard free energy change is equal to minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant K. The relationship between the standard cell potential and the standard free energy change is given by the equation delta G naught equals minus NF multiplied by the standard cell potential. In this case, the lowercase n is the moles of electrons transferred in the balanced chemical equation. The capital letter F is the Faraday constant with a value of 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And the E naught cell is the standard cell potential in volts, which is the same as the units of joules per coulomb. Since both equations are equal to the standard free energy change, we can set these equations equal to each other and get a relationship between the standard cell potential and the equilibrium constant. So initially, we have minus NF multiplied by the standard cell potential equals minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. We can arrange this to isolate the standard cell potential and we would get E0 cell equals RT divided by NF multiplied by the natural log of K. While we could use this general relationship between the standard cell potential and the equilibrium constant, as long as we're working at 25 degrees Celsius, we can simplify this equation to the standard cell potential is equal to 0.0592 volts divided by N multiplied by the log of the equilibrium constant K. It's important to note for these two equations that in the first one we're using the natural log of K, whereas in the simplified equation we're using the log of K. In this problem, we're asked to use the standard reduction potentials provided to calculate the value of the standard free energy change and to determine if the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. The reaction we're given is that I2 solid reacts with two bromide ions in the aqueous phase to produce two iodide ions in the aqueous phase and bromine liquid. In order to begin this problem, we have to recognize that we're given the standard reduction potentials for iodine and the standard reduction potential for bromine. From these, we can get the standard cell potential for the equation as written, and from the standard cell potential, we can get the standard free energy change. Once we recognize our strategy, we can begin by identifying the cathode, or the reduction half reaction, and the anode or the oxidation half reaction. In this case, for the way the reaction is written, we see that the cathode or the reduction half reaction is going to be the solid iodine reacting with two electrons to produce two iodide ions. At the same time, the anode or the oxidation half reaction will be two bromide ions in the aqueous phase producing bromine liquid and two electrons. Now that we know the cathode and the anode, we can use the reduction potentials for the cathode and the anode to find the standard cell potential. So we get E0 cell equals 0.54 volts, which is the reduction potential for the cathode, minus 1.09 volts, which is the reduction potential for the anode. Once we subtract these values, we find that the standard cell potential, negative 0.55 joules per coulomb. Now that we have the standard cell potential, we can use this to find the standard free energy change based on the equation delta G naught equals minus NF multiplied by the standard cell potential. From the half reactions we wrote above, we noticed that there are two electrons transferred 
So in this equation, n equals 2. We already know the value of the Faraday constant, so we could plug these values into the equation, and we get negative 2 moles of electrons times 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron multiplied by negative 0.55 joules per coulomb. In this case, the coulombs and the moles of electrons cancel, and when we do this on a calculator, we find that the standard free energy change is a positive 1.1 times 10 to the fifth joules. Now we can ask the question, is this process spontaneous? The standard free energy change is greater than zero, and the standard cell potential is less than zero, and both of these indicate that this is a non-spontaneous process. After watching this video, you should be able to identify spontaneous processes based on the standard cell potential, the standard free energy change, and the equilibrium constant for the process. You should also be able to use the equation delta G naught equals minus N F E naught to relate the standard free energy change and the standard cell potential. Finally, you should be able to use the equation relating the standard cell potential and the equilibrium constant K find the relationship between these two values at 25 degrees Celsius.